And I believe that's why how the enemy has robbed us. We have looked too much to mother. Even men have looked too much to mother. But the Bible teaches us about a father and his love toward his children. So where would Satan, what would Satan do? He always attacks at the apple of God's eye. The apple of God's eye was Adam. It was Adam. No indictment again. No making Eve of a lesser person. But when God created man, he created Adam. Adam came and had fellowship with God. And out of Adam, he took the woman. Jesus is the second Adam. So God, this relationship in, in our mind between one male to another male. Because when we think of God, even though out of God comes everything and out of Christ comes everything, you don't think of God as a woman. Yet he is as tender as any woman. And he gave women the softness and the tenderness or that part of a woman's personality that we associate with being a woman. But nowhere does he try to explain, nor does he make excuse for, I'm not mother nature, I'm God. It's God. He doesn't try to say that I'm a woman so that he can make females feel comfortable. He says, I'm a father. I'm God. I'm the Lord God Almighty. And it defies our logic to think that out of a male or man, there could come a female or a male. But this shows the omnipotence of God, that out of God himself, he can make both male and female. He is the self-existing one. He didn't need a, a woman to help him birth his son. And that defies our logic because from what we've been taught from little kids, the birds and the beads, that it takes a male and a female to make another person. But God is so awesome and so great that when he made us, he didn't say, well, we've got to find a female somewhere compatible to us. He's just God, the self-existing one. And so... What the world needs now is not another church. We don't need another college. We don't need more innovation. We don't need another phone. We need godly fathers. Amen. And our world wouldn't be in the situation it is in if the world was full of godly fathers. Don't have a problem with mothers because if you can find a godly father, you're going to have godly mothers. Amen. In fact, one affects the other. And I believe that the reason that a lot of females are the way they are today is because they didn't have godly fathers. Or having them, they did not listen to them. But God's answer for the world is the preaching of the gospel, that through the foolishness of preaching, men would be saved. And God's answer for families is not the mother, but it's the father. And the Bible will bear that out. Thank God for all the great mothers. But we need to understand that we've got the cart before the horse. Amen. Amen. There's very few people, young and old, that don't have some issue with either not having a father or not enough of their father or their father in a godly way. Even the best fathers fall way, way short of being fathers that can change the world. The way fathers change the world is they start by changing or letting, they can't change anything, but letting God change them so that they can affect their families 
or affect those that they bring into the world. Amen. So, the world needs godly fathers. Would you agree with me? Would you agree with me? In the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 18, the Bible says, Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he have spoken of him. When God got ready to create faith, he didn't look for a woman. He looked for a man and he found one. Believe it or not, in whatever capacity uh, that uh, it is, and we, w we will never know completely, but God was looking for a friend. He called Abraham his friends. Can you imagine this God who created everybody, everything, but he didn't have a friend? And by that, he didn't have someone that believed what he said, that would follow his leading, that would do his bidding, that without question would just obey. You see, the reason why we need fathers is because the world is lacking having that person who you do what they say with no question. That, it sounds foreign to us. It sounds controlling. It sounds dominating. But yet, if you read your Bible, he told Adam, I give you dominion. I want you to dominate. And what the world fights against and what we will fight against ourselves if we're not careful is domination. The wrong domination we should run from. But our fathers were not given to us to, for us to rebel. If they're godly fathers, they were put here to Domain, to take care of a domain. When you go and you get your website, they call it a domain. Something that you own. Something you control. Something you download information into. And that's what a father is supposed to be to a family. And I just want you to go with me and see why we need to pray and what's happening in our world. That it was the father who was supposed to dominate. There's something in the male DNA that should be downloaded into the family. Once again, my sisters, this is not to diminish you, your roles in any way. But what the world is lacking is not mothers, but fathers. So God said, I see Abraham, he's going to become a great nation. A father has in him the capacity to make a great nation or to have many children. The father, a young man that God is making into a father or a man who is healthy, has the ability to make a great nation. And he said, and all of the nations of the earth are going to be blessed in him. He needed some man that would unconditionally do what he said. And what we understand about fathers, we don't see them as men who will unconditionally do what the Lord say. We see a lot of self-will when it comes to fathers. That the buck stops with dad. And if dad, if it's not his way, he hits the highway. For whatever reason, whether forced out by the mother or forced out because he doesn't exemplify the characteristics of God, dad goes missing. He can go missing as soon as the baby or the child is, is born. It's not unusual to see and hope that he comes to the hospital and we debate on whether to use the mother's maiden name or to use his name. And usually according to his involvement after the pregnancy, a woman makes that decision. She may call him after her family name, 
her given name, which is through her father, or she may choose his name. But that's always something that a woman has to think about. Unless she's married, legally married, most women cross that bridge. But when God created Abram, Abraham, he knew that in him he would find somebody that would do what he asked. Do what he said, do what he asked. Uh, fathers in the Bible, and there's no difference between the old and new when it comes to our Lord. They were given the task of commanding. Again, another word in our modern day that we have taken out of the vocabulary, just as gay has been distorted, in other words, commanding. Fathers were not known in the Bible to be those that asked. They commanded. They said, do. <laughs> and you had to do. Well, through rebellion and through Satan, he made sure and has making sure that there is no young person or old person who has anybody who has the authority to command them. The Bible in itself is a book of commandments. Not just Old Testament, but New Testament. They're not options. Most that was written by the Apostle Paul, these commandments I give you. Jesus, these are the things I give you, my testimonies. And so what our world is missing and the reason the world is near a curse is because we lack in full that person or that entity, that spirit, who will not waver unconditionally and give commandments. Notice the word. He says, he shall become a mighty nation. All the nations shall be blessed, for I know him that he will command his children. Now, we're taught today uh, uh, not to command. And sure, we all, as fathers and even mothers, could uh, do a brush-up course on giving instructions on what is a command. Do you command with a whip? Do you command taking away privileges? But when we were having children, no one actually taught us as fathers how to command our children. Today we run into the problem that if a father tries to command his household, Oftentimes, there is confusion and strife between he and his wife, or he and the mother. Fathers have the propensity to be um, angry and wrathful. Mothers have the propensity to be too indulgent. And by that, I mean indulge them, well, let them do what they want to do. Let them find themselves. But God, he gave us fathers to give guidelines. There was some, supposed to be somebody who liked the principal. You got the teachers, then you got the principal. Now, when I went to school, the principal outranked the teachers. The mother is supposed to be, in a perfect world, to be one of the first teachers, not exemplifying the father from teaching, but the father teaches as well. He teaches differently, but the mother should be the first one to teach you your ABCs. It shouldn't be Miss Smith in English. Mama should be the one to teach them. Today you can go by Mattel and different talk and say quack, quack, duck and teach them. But fathers is, were supposed to have the oversight, and that's what a principal does, has the oversight. Amen. But it, it's like today, the father is like going to a school and there's no principal. And all the teachers are trying to take care of the kids. But in my day, and I've got a few miles on me, when they say you go into the principal's office, <laughs> yeah. 
That was like saying you go into the cross. Because the one thing, I've forgotten a whole lot of stuff and a whole lot of people's names, but I haven't forgotten Mr. Lorman Williams, if you're still living. I haven't forgotten Principal Lorman Williams. Because he impressed upon us, I am the principal. <laughs> and that's what a father does. He impresses upon the house that this is my house. Now, I know I sound Jurassic <laughs> when I say that, but I'm just trying to show you that's what the world is missing. That's what families are missing. Why well, have a child if you're not going to put it into principle? And that's for those who haven't had one yet. <laughs> yeah. Because children need principality. They need dominion over them. Even we are subject to principalities and dominion. Don't believe me? Go out there and start waving your gun. Go out there and drive it past the limit. There's a principality and a power that will enforce. He's not interested in here that you're driving fast because you're trying to work off a little steam. <laughs> Surrender your license. Give me your keys. Walk a line. And that's what a father is. But see, there's rebellion in the earth. And so the rebellion has taken away that principal person. And what happens is the world thinks that we can, and there's been many, there are, there are many great people. And this is not to make anybody feel inadequate because your father and I'm not, he's saying I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that look how you turned out without a father. Look at the principal person that you are without really having a strong male figure in your life. Even men that were in the house have the propensity, again, to be absentee fathers. Amen. But this is why he called a father. Because, first of all, God knew him. And then he will command his children. And then it says his household after him. So we can't celebrate Father's Day without realizing that Every father is supposed to have command of his children and his household after him. And I know that this is not something that everybody wants to hear. But command, why would you marry somebody unless you don't understand marriage? If you don't understand, if you're a female, what that means. Our sisters ought to rethink that. Do you really want to get married? Because when you get married, you're called to do more than be pretty. There's somebody that God, what God have joined together, that God has given command. Now, being a commander is not easy. You can be a bad commander. It's like being a uh, communicator. You can be a poor communicator. But the fact is that to get an army across a river, somebody got to be in command. And I'm only trying to get you to see the picture of why our world is jacked up because we have fathers who have no command of their children. Now, time went on and the mother... Because, again, it was a, I'm going to call it, uh, it I, I hate to say Satan, but I'm going to say that it wasn't perfect and women just stepped up. But it was the Madeers that stepped up and became strong matriarchal women, especially black women. And when there was a problem back in the 50s and 60s, families would go to somebody in the family. 
And uh, it didn't, it wasn't about money. It didn't have to be about money. It was about, there's a problem. We haven't, the, uh, folk didn't have insurance to go get counseling, divorce. We having problems. Robert, uh, I won't say Robert, but Billy ain't coming home. So you went to Madea because Papa was either working, things that, Things didn't just change with you. They started changing. He was either working or he had died an early death. But you went to Muddy and say, we having problems. And she would call over the son-in-law, who may not have been her son, in, her son, but was her son-in-law or the daughter-in-law, and would sit down and give the godly counsel. Now, if Papa had been there, he would have done it too. But... It was, that was, every family had need of somebody that was balanced, that was spiritual, that you could trust. It could have been Uncle, Uncle Lonnie or somebody. But they knew, go to this person. They would come to him for financial issues if they had it. And sometimes because they had uh, uh, exercised the correct principles, they could help you. But they were always full of wisdom. And the others in the family recognized there was something special on this person. Well, that's who Abraham was when God saw him. He says, they shall keep the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord. The father is tasked with setting a stage in the house or setting an atmosphere that when the children are old, they still want to come to their father's house. Nobody say, I'm going to my father's house unless father's deceased. So I'm going to my mother's house. But the Bible teaches the principle about, principle about going to the father's house. It's the father's house. And we just have to ask ourselves, why in the world is it mama's house? And that's not taking away thing from the Proverbs 31st woman who takes care of the family, run everything, because that's not what I'm, what I'm not doing. I'm not bashing or trying to create a division. I am saying that somewhere it ceased to be my father's house. And when it stopped being my father's house, both mentally and spiritually, guess what happened? As much as women tried, but they could not command in the way of the Lord with the same effectiveness. Why? Because women tend to be indulgent. Oh, you going through a bad time now, and you want to fornicate for six months with that girl? Okay, I understand. But a father was supposed to be one who commanded, it's right there, his children after him in the way of the Lord. He was supposed to be unwavering. We all know that both men and women can waver when it comes to the children. But there was something back in the day, and some of y'all will never know it. I mean, I grew up in that way before my mother passed. Sometimes when she was weaning me off of her breast at 12 and 13, she stopped letting me come to her and say, can I go? And first of all, she would correct me and say, may I? And I used to say, may I, can I? I want to go somewhere. Why are you putting me through these changes, you know? She, she was teaching. <laughs> Mama, can I? May I? <laughs> I used to look at her like, man, just be real. This ain't school. But, <laughs> but when she weaned me from her breast, amen, I was 13. I was. Uh, it was always Mama, Mama. And she said to me, Go ask your daddy. When she done that, she rocked my world. Go ask your daddy. I asked him to go somewhere, do something. Go ask your daddy. And I shook my head and said, swallow. <coughs> Throat got dry. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> no. <laughs> she said, ask your daddy, and if he tell you no, Ask him again. I'll never forget that. And that lesson has carried me even before my heavenly father. Which, if he says no, no means no. But if he don't answer, 
if you're not sure. And so I went to my father and I asked him something. <laughs> and he said, ask your mother. I said, she told me to ask you. He said, yeah, go ahead. But he was playing the role, the hand that was dealt to him. Because something has happened where over time, men just relegate, ah, I ain't getting involved with that. Go ask your mama. And then things get out of control. He said that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Uh, we need fathers, godly fathers, so that we can get the curse off the earth. Amen. There is a curse in the earth. And the only way to be free of that curse is to follow the ways of Jesus Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit and to, to have God in your life. But, but when, when, I, when, I, when our Lord, our Father, the Father God, when he saw the earth and he saw the corruption in the earth, he, he left a prophecy in Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. He says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, we can read on, and I will, but I want you to know the first thing about Elijah, if you know anything about Elijah, young people, is that Elijah was a man of prayer. The Bible says in the book of James, he was a man with like passions. He had the same passions of anybody else, but he was a man of prayer. So, God is, is saying, in fact, I'm not just going to send you an individual man because even like Jesus couldn't minister to everybody individually, he said, that's why I've got to go away and the comforter have to come. I'm one, I'm in one body. I can't be in Oklahoma and Missouri.